Hello and welcome to the 84th episode of the Overclocked ZA podcast. That's Overclocked with all the vowels. I am Lindsay Shooters, your host, co-host. I am Sharpshooters on social media, S-H-A-R-P-S-E-H-U-T-T-E-R-S, and that opinion guy on the internet. And I'm joined, as always, by Gavin Dudley, the editor of Tech Magazine, the largest consumer technology magazine in South Africa, and the content manager for Tech Radar dot com south africa um gavin you have the p40 light the huawei p40 light sans google services we've been having a go at each other over email because your <laughs> whatsapp doesn't work tell the people what your experience has been like gavin <laughs> tell the people okay Lindsay is like so status quo okay i mean the underlying politics there's like major tech politics uh, you know it's threatening to actually close down overcast uh, overclocked if we don't kind of get to the bottom of our issues, you know, off air, you know, eventually we're going to blow up this whole podcast because um, the bottom line is it's a political issue. For me, the success of Huawei after Trump cut them off from American technology is imperative. It's imperative that we have more players with irons in the fire globally. And it's important that Huawei succeeds, even if it's only in part, even if they're only a bit player, it's important that the entire mobile phone, smartphone industry is not run by Google and Apple as it is today. So as Lindsay pointed out, I'm a little bit biased going in just because my politics are well known already. You know, um, I, for one, welcome our Chinese overlords. But <laughs> um, so... <laughs> little racial slur in the morning. Um, so um, Huawei, uh, as we've often discussed, now has a flagship phone out, the P40. It's been in other markets of the world. The P40 Pro, which is the serious flagship, the all singing, all dancing model, hasn't yet launched in South Africa. I feel like it is imminent. The pricing is out there. It costs 22,000 Rand and you can actually pre-order it now, but it's not out there. What they've actually launched with is the P40 Lite. And what makes this Huawei phone different to every other Huawei phone is that you don't get all the Google services on it as standard. You've heard us banging this drum over the weeks. I'm sure we don't need to go over it all again. But it was critically important for me to do a deep dive on how this was going to work. Because I feel like if a Huawei is going to survive at all, it can't just survive in China, supported by the Chinese population who have national pride and all use WeChat and no one uses WhatsApp. We need to know if Huawei can cut it in the rest of the world. So it was critically important that we get a good working knowledge of how the phone will work without Google products on it. So Android is technically not a Google product as such. So the phone runs Android. It's actually open source. They're, and Google developed it, but it's actually available free to everyone. So uh, Android runs the phone. So it all feels familiar, just like an Android phone should. The problem comes when you're trying to get your apps going. Okay. so. Um, Huawei launches with this great tool called Phone Clone. Now, if you, I mean, I read up on this, which is why I know that you really want to start with Phone Clone. If you start without Phone Clone, you get into deep trouble. Phone Clone allows you to pull over all the important apps you want with some of its data from the phone you're already using. You run Phone Clone on the two phones. That allowed me to pull over Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, other things like that, that are not available in Huawei's actual app store. But, so there was a lot of hopping and skipping around in order to get my top 20 apps together onto the Huawei phone. Because I couldn't just go to the Play Store the usual way, download everything I need. You had to kind of dance around a little bit. So, here is the short version of what has worked and what has failed so far. Stop smirking, Lindsay. I can see you smirking. <laughs> Tell the people how you broke WhatsApp. <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's what worked. All my Microsoft services work brilliantly. So the Microsoft Office app works brilliantly. OneDrive works brilliantly. It looks and feels exactly like the regular Android. Um, the Edge browser, which we are now using, which is also a Microsoft product, works brilliantly. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Netflix, Audible, Spotify, everything works brilliantly. Okay, what is not working? It's Google Chrome, which I no longer use because I'm using Microsoft Edge. Um, the Google's podcast app, which is the one I ended up using as my main app, uh, thing doesn't work. I'm now getting all my podcasts through Spotify instead, which is working out great because I use Spotify all the time. Um, Google Keep, which is where Lindsay and I share our notes, for example, for these shows, 
I'm now swapping out with Microsoft sticky notes, which I explained last week, synchronized quite nicely to the PC in the background. Um, Google Maps has been replaced by Huawei's own product, which is called Here, uh, as in H-E-R-E, but mm -hmm. they've added on a We Go. So it's Here We Go. Here is a known um, mapping specialist application. I think it was originally used by Nokia, and then it was sold yes. to someone else. And this is going to become else. important later. <laughs> Okay, all right. So <laughs> this clearly has adequate mapping data. I haven't actually used it to, to go anywhere and do anything, mainly because we're still semi-locked down. I haven't need to navigate my way to meetings and so on. But from what I can tell, I looked up a couple of my addresses, I saved a couple of places and so on, and all that appeared to work fine. It's not as pretty as Google Maps, but it appears to do the job. YouTube, which we all know Lindsay does a lot of, I don't do nearly as much YouTube. YouTube I'm using inside a web browser, but it really it works and looks great, and it's very well adapted for playing in a web browser. Lindsay might argue with me on that. Can so you put it as a so shortcut on your, on your home screen? Uh, I haven't tried that, but I should be able to. I can't remember now. I, I, did, I did try that with one or two other things. I can't remember if I did it with YouTube. Should be able to. So it opens a browser window running YouTube at, at one click. Yeah, that's what we should be able to do. So the problem started with WhatsApp. Now, unfortunately, WhatsApp is kind of the backbone of everybody's communications with their friends, their family, their colleagues, and so on. It might not be considered business communication, but it's simply the fastest, quickest, most efficient way to operate. Okay, so I tried to phone clone WhatsApp. Okay, WhatsApp came over. It didn't bring any of the conversations that I was busy with. It brought over a few of the groups, and the application ran, but it didn't have my history of WhatsApp. It didn't have the current conversations that I was busy with. And I'm used to having my entire WhatsApp with me at all times. When I swap phones, WhatsApp will go to Google Drive and pull down my, my WhatsApp backup. So it will pull down everything that was on my previous phone onto the new phone. Now, I didn't do this, which started off the problem. Um, I then tried to re-register WhatsApp. I got a few things wrong. Um, and after three attempts, WhatsApp cut me off and told me I would have to wait 24 hours before I could re-validate re WhatsApp to run again. Um, I was convinced that WhatsApp was going to go and fetch the archive off Google Drive like it's done every single time before <laughs> on every Android phone. <laughs> but so to date, I have not succeeded. I got closer yesterday after trying my WhatsApp for the second time and then told to wait 48 hours before I could I've got five hours to go for my cool before it to take me five. Okay. But it's important that someone is sacrificing themselves. Someone is sacrificing themselves so that consumers will know how to perform this. And you know, I'll be posting about this on Twitter and uh, I won't be posting about it on WhatsApp, of course, but I'll be posting about it on Twitter and Facebook and other places so that you, listener, won't have to fall foul of the same problem were you to go the Huawei new phone route. So, okay. in summary... That was a lot of exposition. Summary, that was a lot of exposition. <laughs> my, my top 10 apps worked brilliantly. WhatsApp failed, and I'm hoping to get it resurrected at some point. That's the summary. Other than that, I would have to say for 6,500 Rand, which is its price, it is a very good phone. It's not great. It's merely very good. There's a lot of competition for six and a half thousand Rand. My biggest problem is that it doesn't feel like a flagship phone at all. It feels like a mid-range phone, which is fine. The P40 is an engineering marvel in itself. The P40 Pro, the proper P40, not yet launched here, is more like a Huawei at its very, very best. This is a bit of a trade-off, uh, you know, for six and a half thousand Rand. The real P40 Pro, 21,000 Rand. So it's a big difference. Okay. Um, that's about my story. I'm trying to work out why would Huawei launch here with the P40 Lite and not go with the P40 Pro, P40 Pro out the box, out the blocks. I don't know what you're thinking is there, Lindsay. Why would uh, they go with the Lite? P40, the, the Lite series is their biggest seller by far. I mean, they've been pushing out lights since way back and everybody just buys lights. Like probably 90% oh, of the people who we know- after the regular- uh, sometimes they use the halo effect, but this time they had to step out yeah. to the mass market product first because, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> All right. that's just economics, man. Like, so, so here's my thing, right? I, I, I fully understand the WhatsApp thing. I can't even get over that because 
like if I move to an if I move back to my iPhone, there's no WhatsApp backup. And I actually uh, interestingly right, right. had this conversation with my wife, and my wife was like, "I don't back up my WhatsApps because I'm not a psycho." <laughs> and then I started uh-huh, thinking uh-huh. about it, and I was like, "What sort of like what do you gain by backing up all of your WhatsApp conversations instead of like just trying to keep receipts on conversations you've had in the past? Like what what is the Make the net the gain?" Yeah. And make a good like, point. What is so valuable about those conversations? I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe not much. Maybe I must revisit that idea. Mm-hmm. Good exactly. point. Exactly. So, like, because we were chatting on email and you were saying, yeah, I'm sure that WhatsApp uh, will make a solution for Huawei and have like this platform agnostic backup system. Like, dude, they haven't done it for Apple. <laughs> They're not going to do it. Oh, for okay. Huawei. All right. So, like, okay. That doesn't make, point. like, I've, I've had the lockout. A lot of times as well, if you're swapping between phones, WhatsApp doesn't like that. If you request like the the verification code too quickly in succession, like three times in a row, yeah, that's and then right. it's like that's no, you're gonna freeze you. Yeah, that, that that happens. I've been through that. It was just really funny that it happened to you as, as you were stepping <laughs> out into this brave new world. <laughs> and you did it twice because you were so stubborn and you were like, no, I will break oh, this over. Well, anyway, okay. So, I mean, so it, my, it could still work. I've now been consulting with other tech to journalists who seem to have got it. Go. <laughs> okay. Let it go. Okay. You're, going to, you're going to eat your headphone cable next week on the show when I get it working. <laughs> Listen, this is a All very, right, you move on. It's a very funny headphone cable because it's the, the two and a half millimeter to three and a half millimeter. So I'm not eating oh, this right. thing anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, it, uh, uh, my my problem, and I think Michael Fisher, Mr. Mobile, summed it up very well in his P40 Pro Plus um, camera re- review. Uh, he I think he launched it today. We are recording on the 10th of June. It's my wife's birthday. Um, just throwing that in there. <laughs> um, yeah, he said that if a company the size of Microsoft couldn't make the phone work, and they were facing mm-hmm. very similar challenges to what Huawei is facing now. Obviously, not with an absolute ban on them. That was just kind of Google swinging its large appendage and telling app makers, like, guys, <laughs> don't go there, no matter how much they're going to throw you away. Like, yeah. apps matter. Like, the iPhone, what it did, it made the smartphone into this blank canvas that you fill with all of the services that you use and it turns into something better. Yes, you still need stonkingly good hardware, but I've just been looking at a similarly priced phone, the Samsung Galaxy A51, a phone which I have panned on this podcast and other podcasts for being too slow yes. for its price. Um, yes, compares this. Yeah. very favorably in every single metric barring RAM size. Even the macro camera mm-hmm. is a five megapixel job on the Samsung versus the two megapixel job on the Huawei P40 Lite. Um, why mm. people want two megapixel um, <laughs> macro cameras, I have no idea. Um, mm. like, like those macro cameras aren't good at all. Uh, none of them that I've, but yeah, they pretty much even well, Stevens, they, they like a millimeter, no. Samsung is a millimeter shorter than the Huawei. They're running similar powered processes just the ram is different and then the cameras are virtually identical okay you but you and i had a bit of a dance off we had a bit of a macro dance off well no you you had taken a picture of some sap oozing out of a plant and then on the weekend i was also in the mountains and also took a picture of some sap coming out of a plant i used a super macro to do it on my six and a half thousand rand phone you uh-huh. shot it sort of natively with your lens no macro but on a high density sensor on yeah. the S20 Ultra, right? Mm, yeah. The Samsung S20 Ultra. And you never really said what you felt about the pictures. Did you think my picture had any merit? I thought um, it was pretty damn good for a six and a half thousand rand phone. It was, I mean, it compared was, to your, your phone, was, which would be the equivalent of 20, 26,000 rand. Uh, 20,000 rand difference in the picture. It's the S20 Plus, and the review is going oh, up sorry. tomorrow. So when you hear this. Um, it, your your picture was good. It was fine. <laughs> <laughs> there were no, there okay. were no defining qualities. Uh, but yeah, just, just, no, to, just to wrap this up. I agree. So like if a company the size of Microsoft couldn't make it work, and I mean, they had year maps. They pumped a lot of money into developing that. I think they bought they something they stupid did. like 20% of the company. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
So they were pushing that. They were pushing their own app stores. They were throwing money, just hemorrhaging money, throwing it at developers to make them yes, stuff. Yes, they were. And like, if the apps aren't there, like, can you, can you, with a sober mind, tell your, like, your parents, get the Huawei P40 Lite? No. Unfortunately, at this stage, I can't. Um, mainly because I've had to jump over too many hurdles, yeah. crawl through too many tunnels and stuff to get it working. But it's like the very first phone. My concern is that while we mustn't trip and fall at this first hurdle or else they will have no chance. I'm trying to work out how they could have done this better. In other words, could they have got better apps into the store? How they could have done this better? I don't know. I don't know yeah. if they could have done better, if this is the best they can do at this at this time. You know, if they stay with it, it might improve. But by then, consumers would have marched on and ignored mm. them. Um, I mean, do you maybe want to segue into my issue about the chips, which is kind of interesting, because their whole pipeline of phones might come to a grinding halt anyway. Yeah. Oh, yes, because they, they, they can't that work with TSMC anymore. Yeah, yeah. So um, shall I give you my sort of summary of what's going yeah. on here? Yes. Okay, so, um, damn, if I was listening to our podcast, I'd be so sick of hearing about Huawei and America <laughs> and Google and stuff. But it's just, it's just that, you know, it's so fundamental to our industry, what's going on here. It's America versus China, which actually is like a whole paradigm. It's a whole culture yeah. of innovation and stuff that we're talking about. It's not just about Huawei and Google and Trump and Apple. It's about cultural stuff, cross-cultural stuff and digital culture stuff. So Trump's latest is... He's now trying to prevent any American technologies being used by Huawei in any form. Now, while Huawei makes lots of fabulous chips, um, in particular one called Kirin. Kirin is its, is its kind of best chip, I think, and it's been used in lots of things, mostly in its phones. Yeah. Um, so Huawei makes lots of its own chips. It's got, I mean, making microchips is a hugely expensive and complex business, but they all use reference designs that were originally developed by American companies. So it doesn't actually matter if you've got a factory to make your own chips. If you're not allowed to use the underlying microchip designs that mm. Huawei is using, they will not be able to produce any chips. So Huawei's options are to buy chips from other companies, but it needs them in such huge quantities that nobody can actually supply at those chips. Yeah. So what's going on here is that Trump appears to have accidentally achieved what he set out to do, which is to cripple Huawei and to cripple their rollout of their 5G network, because now that you know, Huawei is going to have limitations on producing both the phones, but also the actual 5G towers, for which it has $500 billion worth of contracts around the world. Yeah. $500 billion, that's half a trillion dollars worth of contracts to roll out 5G networks around the world, which it now can't do because it can't produce the chips needed to make the 5G base stations. So Trump has accidentally nearly achieved what he's been trying to do this whole time. So, I mean, that's the big picture, you know? Yeah, yeah. So the whole thing is everyone kind of uses uh, reference designs and then not just the reference design, but actually the, the, the method of reducing the transistor. So like you'll hear people talking about like seven nanometers and Samsung has just started development on it. Five nanometers. So that is the actual right. size of the transistor that conducts the signal um, across it. And then you can yes. just pack more yeah. transistors together on that on the silicon die and then just, like that. Just for the record, while Lindsay warms to his theme, it's worth noting that Intel, which is, you know, the, the arch chip maker in the world, the pride and joy, the crown jewel of American microtechnology, has been unable to match the Asian companies for producing chips down yeah. to seven micros, right, which is where all the chips are now being made at seven micros. Intel has been unable to reach that. So, okay, sorry, do continue. No worries. <laughs> So I there's hate, a big cut. cutting in mid stride. So so there's 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 like you'll hear a lot of talk about foundries. So foundries are the people who actually like create the silicon and the transistors and pack it all together. So the smaller your transistor is, the more transistors you can get onto the die, and the more powerful your thing is, and the more heat efficient and like it just gains. It's it's crazy that power and efficiency are on the same curve. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's just yeah. like there's a real anomaly. Technologies. Yeah. Mm. So, so there's a company called TSMC, and they are the foundries for Apple's silicon as well. So I've said it for a long time, 
um, because that's it's always a TikTok. Huawei will put out like Huawei brought out the neural processing unit first, and then like two months later, Apple came out and they're like, we also have a neural processor, and you'll see their chips kind of progress at the same speed, but just because. Huawei uses the Android ecosystem, or at least the Android software, it can't fully optimize all of that power to then be used greatly and like do the crazy stuff on the benchmarks and all those things. So Apple always has the, the, the lead on there. So now they're putting pressure on TSMC and telling them, listen, you can't then make for all of these companies if you are making for Huawei. And then they're like, okay, cool, whatever, man. <laughs> Peace out. Yeah, Huawei. yeah, yeah. But so Samsung might so, come so in and save the day. If it's got capacity, yeah. yeah. So so here is the double punch that America has now done. At first, it took its software away from Huawei and made it unable to produce the phones properly. Then it, refu- then it, then it poisoned other countries against using their 5G network technology, which yeah. was you know, far and away the best in the world and the most affordable. Um, and now it's preventing them from actually building the 5G products that it needs to build to fulfill yeah. its contracts, both the phones and the 5G network stuff, which is even more important in a sense. So in that sense, America has now really turned the screws on these guys. Um, Anyway, moving on from that, Gavin, you have some very interesting little point here in the note. Worldwide Works, run by our friend and sometimes collaborator, um, Arthur Goldstock, he put Mm. out his social media landscape 2020 report today, uh, this morning. Yes. So, I mean, Worldwide Works, probably the most credible research organization in South Africa for doing this kind of thing. They really are boots on the ground and they really dig deep into the South African tech scene. And, in, you know, in the social media space, they've been doing this particular report, I believe, for 12 years. So I'm just going to fly through these things. It's lots of numbers and statistics. You can track down the live stream on uh, YouTube would be the best because not only does Arthur there present their findings of what's going on in the South African social media scene, but he's actually got some expert commentators to help him analyze the scene. So um, here's what's going on. They speak to companies and ask them what, what they are using for social media. And, you know, it's not about asking people what they're using for social media, but what companies are using social media for, because that's where the money and the spend mm. is. So in short order, 90 uh, 90 of companies said they're using facebook around about uh, sorry i'm rounding these figures up by the way uh 70 77 said they're using twitter 75 percent said they're using linkedin which is one of the biggest growth areas mm. people using linkedin and they are very close to twitter um and 69 percent said they're using instagram so that's 90 for facebook 77 for twitter 75 for linkedin 69 for instagram YouTube, which everyone assumes would be a big deal, is actually showing quite a serious decline, and it's down to 50%. Um, um, I, my theory is that possibly corporates have used uh, video bloggers in the past and not got good return on it, but we'll come on to that topic a little later. So they then asked these companies, what platforms do you want to use in the future? Mm. And here's one of the biggest surprises of the whole report. TikTok, 30% of companies said they want to use TikTok for messaging, marketing, and engagement. 30% want to use TikTok. This is a platform that no one had really heard about when they did the last report, which was like a year and a half ago. You know, So TikTok is a big deal. WhatsApp, because WhatsApp now has a way of doing, I think it's called like the business broadcast, where you can do the sort of one too many, mm. which we as consumers are not allowed to do. Businesses can actually send broadcast messages out on WhatsApp. Um, they still believe that blogs, like a company blog, is valuable. I question whether company blogs are all that interesting or important. But but 25% of companies believe in using the company blog to communicate. 23% are going to use YouTube and 22% are going to use Instagram. Okay, so that's what they say they're going to do. Then the next question is, where did you actually spend your money in the last year? Mm. And... Um, Uh, 59% of funds went to Facebook. And Arthur's theory there is that people know and understand Facebook. So they don't hesitate to spend money there because they can see and understand how it works, Mm. how the ad works and so on. Um, 16% are spending, and so that's the lion's share, 60% of people's social media budgets going to Facebook. 16%, which is kind of a crumb, is going to LinkedIn, Instagram, 12%, Twitter, 5%. Then YouTube, WhatsApp, all 
uh, all tiny percentages, like one and two percent, that kind of thing. So 60 percent, which is the lion's share, is still with Facebook mm. because people understand it. And the reason people are interested in TikTok is because they're still trying to figure out what TikTok is and how it works and whether they're a user or not. So, again, one of Arthur's theories is that people are more comfortable spending money on stuff that they themselves use. If they're not a TikTok user, then they don't want to spend money on things that they don't understand. Yeah. You know? um, he then asked about returns on investment. In other words, do you believe that after you spent this money, you actually got a return on your investment? And 66% said yes. 3% said no, which is interesting. I would have expected it to be higher. 3% mm -hmm. said no. But 31% were unsure if they'd got return on their social media investment. And as Arthur pointed out, people who are unsure whether they got return on their investment is unlikely to spend more money there, you know, because yeah. it's not a, a dead, it's not a certain win kind of thing. Um, and that's the broad strokes. Um, um, they, I haven't quite got as far as picking up on the influences, but 29% of companies said, they are using influencers to promote mm. their brand and so on. And 60% of companies said they know who individuals are who are very influential in their marketplace. Yeah. They know them, but, but they didn't indicate that they would necessarily spend money with them, just that they are aware of who the influencers are in their space. 60% of companies know about that, which is interesting. Um, mm. They then, then got into figures for which one of the, the social media platforms are growing really quickly. I'm not going to drill into that now because we don't really have time. But suffice to know that there are 9 million people on Instagram, uh, about half of which are very active, 7.5 million people on LinkedIn, and one of the fastest growing, 9 million people on Twitter, exactly the same as Instagram, mm -hmm. also with about half very active. And TikTok, uh, I didn't get the global figure, but they started running down who the biggest players were on TikTok, yeah. but um, and, and the biggest South African players and so on. But maybe I'll bring you the more some more of those figures the next time we chat. So is okay. Vian Magic is Vian Magic the the biggest TikToker? I don't yes, know. I don't know what far. the qualifier is there. Um, so, yeah. so Vian, I, I dig, I dig the stuff that he does. He has this very high energy style and it's always like, Vian, 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 uh, show us some, show us some magic trick. And then he does yeah, like, yeah. Quickly, <laughs> and he involves his mom. There's like a lot of scripted things you can see there. Where it's always like his in mom. his kitchen on the counter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, I dig, yeah. I, I, I dig, I dig everything that he's doing there, but he also does the really irritating thing. And he start like, he stopped doing it now, but at the beginning he used to do it a lot where he was like, uh, he does like the full trick and then. You you waiting for the, the the big punchline and then he's like yeah you yeah. have to like follow or like click the next oh, one oh yeah yeah go to come for the next one yeah that just never works for me that infuriates me and then I refuse to follow them and I refuse to go back to the second part there's too much TikTok to watch you know you're not compelling enough for me to go back bro yeah okay he doesn't but, do that anymore I don't think no he doesn't he's he's moved on he's 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 found his niche now he's got his numbers growing nicely and I mean those numbers just grow exponentially once you reach a certain level um they're amazing uh, but I mean I think Arthur's point was that clearly he's broken out into an international audience because yeah. to get to nine million users you know you must surpass the South African yeah. local kind of market yeah Anyway, okay. so so going back to to the point about about the Facebook thing, just from like a social media manager perspective, like Facebook is the easiest to use out of all of the platforms. Like it gives you all of the tools right up front. You can schedule yeah. all your posts nicely. It like the it just does everything. Like Instagram is good, and I I love creating content for brands or at least for clients for Instagram mm. and I know what's going to work. But then like if you are working on this big campaign and you have like the staggered rollout and you really want to drip feed things like Instagram, you always kind of have to post in real time where as they are yeah. workarounds to do, like schedule postings um, on, on Twitter and like all the other platforms. But just like Instagram is just the. the <laughs> well, the I, other I, thing I, is I, that I think. Yeah. I, I mean, I I'm. I, I don't think that Arthur was necessarily dealing with people who are hard selling their goods. I think they're yes. mostly looking at people who, do, who, are, who are kind of getting their messaging out. But I'm still yeah. very impressed with Facebook's kind of shop fronting system. It's not perfect. Mm. None of them are. But of all the others, uh, theirs is really good. You know, if you want to set up a store, you want people to see your wares and you actually want to conduct commerce. Facebook is still really good at that, better than any of the others, in my opinion. Mm. Yeah, Facebook had the big lead. I mean, they brought a the newsfeed. They've introduced so much innovation in the social media space. Like, they kind of 
built the game and now they just are capitalizing yeah, yeah. on on the part that they built and this brings me to another point so my my daughter's live lessons have started this week um Ooh. so it's all done through um i almost said hangouts it's not hangouts anymore they've even ripped <laughs> away the hangout monica it's now just google meet and so here's the scenario right you sign in and then there's a bunch of of parents kind of hunching over their kid and like making the face of like <laughs> what is going on because one we were in the wrong class because the, the region code that they gave us the meeting code was the same as like a different regions code so we were just like oh, just like they didn't check the schedules and so we were just smashing into the wrong class there and then that's like there's no controls for the teacher to mute everybody at the same time so there's just like chaos for like 10 minutes where kids are saying hi to their friends and then they're unmuting themselves and oh. like there's a five minute a five minute slideshow where they're just teaching the kids how to use meets and i looked yeah, at this yeah, and i, I was know. like you know what zoom deserves to win because zoom <laughs> put in the hard yards to make it a great user <laughs> experience they uh, deserve to win <laughs> Uh, Zoom stumbled backwards into this thing. They had no idea. They were like a bit player. I don't know why. I think, I mean, didn't we already discuss the reason Zoom is currently leading is because the sign-in and the usage is really easy because yeah. there's no sign-in. There's no barrier to entry. You know, they yeah. don't try to catch your details and stuff. They just want you to use the product. And they ended up winning just on, on that basis alone, so, which is jolly I'll, interesting. I'll link, I'll link a video in the podcast description about the founder of Zoom and how it came to be. And it's really an interesting story because it was guys that like used to work on other products. And then they were like, you know what? I have this idea and I'm just going to break out. And he took like 20 engineers with him. And uh -huh. they, their whole MO was to make the user experience seamless. And everything else came after that. So, like, you can see it with okay. the security flaws that they've had, like, where they've spent their money. But, yeah, they, they deserve yeah. to win, man. I'm Like, I love Skype. So, yeah, I still so love Skype. Teams is, ugh, I have issues with Teams, man. But, yeah, Zoom, just from, from yeah. a classroom perspective, they, 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 deserve, they deserve all the credit that's going to them right now. Okay. I mean, I, I must say only one in... 10 calls on Zoom is flawless and fluid and swift and whatever. You know, yeah. I mean, the fact that we can record this podcast week after week on Skype is mind blowing to me, given my Zoom experience. This would be completely and utterly impossible on Zoom, you know, yeah. well, during, during peak time anyway. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, no, it definitely would. But moving on quickly, let's stop briefly at why is Google so bad at TV, Gavin? <laughs> Did we talk about it last week? No. This is a hangover. We did. Um, did. I just want to and say I, it I every week. I just want to say why, why is Google you. so bad? <laughs> oh. Why are they releasing another new product line to do the Chromecast thing? And like, why are they so bad at TV? Anyway, moving on. Gavin, no. Mark, yes. what's your mask situation now? When you go out in public, what are you rocking? What what do you like wearing? What don't well, you like wearing? Do you have different masks for different applications? Um, oh, can I tell my, my flow joke that I told once before? Oh, I've already good. got like two or three jokes. So I'm going to have to tell the same joke again. For all those listeners who didn't get it the first time, it goes like this. If you don't like the mask, you're really going to hate the ventilator. <laughs> Okay, uh, I told, I've already told that one. Okay, enough. Um, um, yeah, so my wife was totally all over this mask thing when we when it looked like this was going to be more than a one-off thing. She immediately started ordering. And even then it became apparent that you want to try and support people with small home industries and stuff like that. So, you know, neighborhood watches are really good for spreading word on, you know, who got masks where and so on. So I don't yeah. know where we got our first leads from. But um, I know they were kind of community made, you know, the first few. And um, so we've now ended up with different generations of masks. The first masks were big and comfortable. The second masks were a bit more flimsy, but more, you know, easier stuff in your pocket. Then we got yeah. the sort of sports masks, which were really thin and you could breathe easily through them. Yeah. But they would always bend my ears over. So, you know, there are all these different permutations. So what are you doing? Uh, so I have I have like a, a thick cotton mask, you know, the ones that make you look like a ninja. Um, and I have yeah, like yeah. big ears, actually. And I have a big head. 
So the 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 ear hook ones, they always like pull my ear. Like I, I'm convinced yes, we're all gonna totally look like 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 nineties like nineties um <laughs> uh, uh, locks like rugby locks with all our cauliflower ears once all this is over. Oh right, um, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like Corpus Christi, Strauli yeah. and, and those those cats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Strauli so and Bisse, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got that, um, but the problem with that is because it's so thick. Um, it's a proper three layer like cotton thing. Um, all of the, the the vapor goes straight up into my glasses. glasses. So I, yeah, I yeah. started Everyone's using the trick where, where you fold the piece of um, toilet paper or tissue uh, just on the bridge of the nose because you want to get like a nice seal around the nose area so that the air can't escape that way and then gets forced out in other ways. Um, but then I just I have a plethora of buffs and I just roll with that. So I'll fold it double. Um, yeah. over my mouth and nose, and right. that that that's how I roll most of the time. I use that when I'm out running the dogs, that sort of thing. Um, okay. Yeah, so I'm looking for like a breathable one that like ties at the back, but with like an elastic yeah. thing that what doesn't get the, the wash. Yeah. So I'm looking for like this Goldilocks mask that I know doesn't <laughs> exist. That's why I decided to talk to you because okay. it's a piece of technology, man. It's like like there's a lot of stuff that yeah. goes into it. Need a three layer, and then we bought the kids like these new tie back ones at, at pick and pay selling with the little filter thing that you stick in. Yes, and, you can yeah, stick things in. Yeah, and then they have the, the, the face the shield so that oh. makes you look like a diet cop. <laughs> yeah, face shield. So I just need a baton and like a, a baton and a thing. Yeah, oh gosh. Okay, okay. so as all the pictures are going around in the world right now. <laughs> But, but where, yeah, you're right. Ooh, yeah, it's a convergence of two things, yeah. masks and riot cops. <laughs> um, 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 which reminds me, we didn't speak about IBM, but I think we're out of time. We'll do that yeah. another time. IBM has stopped developing facial recognition technology and is basically challenging Congress to drop facial recognition technology as a usage because of misidentification of offenders and all sorts of things. And mm. IBM was one of the the leaders in this technology. Anyway, moving on. Um, so, so what does what does Take a Lot have to offer us? Uh, so, I found the sport mask with exhalation valves. So, I haven't actually tested the ones with uh -huh. those little valves on the side yet, um, right. but they look very promising as 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 a thing that that I could use. And this one is three hundred and forty nine rand. It's a five layer job with a removable filter, and they package i think three replacement exhalation valves in the box as well it's like these little discs that they have one way um exhale they look like the little water grommets that they put over the the microphones and all the holes like the speaker grill hole on your phone and right. yeah it's got a little plastic shapeable thing on your nose so you can do that right and it which has might ear, help, help with your specs yeah it has yeah. ear loops Ear loops and like this this tie back thing strap across the back, uh, so it's got the best of all worlds. Three hundred and forty nine rand, twelve percent off right now. The sport mask with exhalation valve. <laughs> you COVID ninja, you. <laughs> he said wordplay, wordplay. <laughs> no, they all all the ones with the valves all look like ninja masks, man. You look yeah. like something out of Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Okay, so I found. Again, it's just a generic name, but I recommend you look this up. Triple layer nylon spandex five pack washable print mask for 179. So it's triple layer, which is the important thing you want to look for. Spandex is great because A, it washes well and it's nice and stretchy. So, you know, you don't have hard fabrics trying to that you're trying to shape into something. It's nice and flexible, adapts to the shape of your face. And this has now two strings which you tie at the back, which means once you've got the optimal kind of pressure, you can actually tie them and you can actually, you don't have to retie them every time. You can actually just pull the mask off because the strings are stretchy because they're spandex. So, but you can get the perfect pressure, you know, because the, they're separate strings, you can tie them up. So I'm going with triple layer nylon spandex five pack washable print mask. They've got kind of funky colors and stuff. Yeah. 179, you're not going to do better than that, man. 179 for five masks. You can leave one in your drawer, one in your car, two in your car for you and the passenger. And, you know, you can leave one at your desk. You can leave one by the front door, whatever, you know, with five, five masks. Good for families. Yeah, That's for me, it's all about having multiple options that you can cycle through because you don't want to use the same mask repeatedly without washing it. Um, 
Stay safe, everybody. That's me. I'm Lindsay Shooters. That's Sharpshooters on social media. S-H-A-R-P-S-C-H-U-T-T-E-R-S. ThatOpinionGuy.co.za is the website. That Opinion Guy on YouTube. And I'll chat to you next week. Kevin. Happy birthday, Monique. Happy birthday, Monique. Okay. <laughs> Monique Shooters' birthday today. Happy birthday, Monique. Um, okay, um, nothing to report. Tech Radar, we're still working on our best of lists. I promised I would tell you what gear is up for grabs when we launch, what kind of prizes you can win, free giveaways and stuff. I'm afraid I haven't compiled the list yet, but do take a look at our best headphones list and increasingly our best laptop list is going up later today. On Tech Radar, just go to techradar.com and you'll automatically be defaulted into the South African version of the site. That's my story. Cheers, stay safe.